Good evening. Thank you. My name is Chris Schmidt. I'm the Dean of Students, and uh, I'm very excited for this evening. Uh, but before we kind of get started with everything, how about this meal? Can we please take a moment? Please take a moment to appreciate Jeff Willis, Miss Joanne Panko, and all these wonderful folks that you see back there. Just absolutely great. They serve our students, faculty, staff in this community year-round, and they're the best at what they do. Thank you so much. As Dr. Adams said during the welcome, 10 amazing years of celebrating student leadership with the L3 Banquet. That is the history that we are all part of today. For the last three days, we have celebrated the live, learn, and lead spirit of L3 across campus with incredible presentations and discussions during the L3 Symposium. I want to make sure we give plenty of kudos and hashtags of thanks to everyone who participated and attended the symposium. All of this, every bit of it, the symposium, this banquet, is made possible through the hard work, the imagination, the creativity, and dedication of many people across campus. But I'd like to offer a very special shout out to Natalie Vickers. And if you look in your program, you'll notice that Natalie is a 2013 recipient of the L3 award when she was a student. Now she serves as an employee of the Bonner Leadership Program. Her tireless commitment and leadership to L3 and our students is what makes it possible. Natalie, thank you for making all this happen. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge a few different groups in the room. And I'm pleased if you could hold your applause till we get to the end. I appreciate that. First, all the students that we are here tonight to celebrate. I have the greatest job in the world, as do every other person who works here at the college, when we get to come and work with young people every single day. So that you never come to work when you work with the young people at Lindsay Wilson College, and it's great. So we're going to be celebrating them tonight. I want to thank and appreciate all of the parents and the guests that are here, because it's your support that has helped us get to this moment tonight to celebrate. I want to make sure, as I look out to the crowd, that we um, thank and appreciate the faculty and staff for providing the leadership to help our campus community learn and grow every single day. I had this in my notes and I thought about taking it out because I got a note today from uh, Dr. Begley, our chancellor, and he sent me an apology. He said that it was the first time in the 10 years that we've been hosting this that he wasn't going to be able to make it to dinner tonight. He said that he, wanted to, he wasn't feeling well and he wanted to rest up because tomorrow night he is our Founders Day speaker. And so uh, he has offered this college a lifetime of leadership, and uh, I always think it's important to recognize him. As I look out, I see uh, the administration, the folks like Dr. Adams, Ms. Denise Budge, Dr. Parrish is with us, Kevin Thompson, and uh, Mr. Mark Coleman. You all provide the daily compass of leadership that guides this college. And finally, uh, I'd be remiss not to mention the gentleman sitting up front, Dr. Lucky. Our president who sets the example of leadership for all of us to follow every single day. Big round of applause for all of us. <laughs> Tonight it is my honor to introduce our keynote speaker, Senator Max Wise. Senator Max Wise represents the 16th district, district which encompasses Adair, Clinton, Cumberland, McCreary, Russell, Taylor and Wayne counties. He is the chairman of the Education Committee, chair of the Budget Review Subcommittee on Transportation, and also chairman of the Education and Assessment and Accountability Review Subcommittee, as well as a member of many other subcommittees. Your secretary sent me your bio, I had to cut it down, it was long. <laughs> Serving a lot of committees. Senator Wise earned a Master of Arts in International Politics and National Security from the University of Kentucky Patterson School. In addition, he holds an Advanced Certificate in Homeland Security from the Bush School of Government at Texas A&M University. Senator Wise teaches graduate level courses in Terrorism Studies, Intelligence, and Intelligence Analysis at the Patterson School. He lives in Campbellsville, Kentucky with his wife. Dr. Heather Wise, pediatric dentist 
and their four children. Please join me in welcoming not only a great leader, but a true friend to the college, Senator Max Watts. Chris, thank you so much for the kind words. I know you're probably thinking, well, we've got a, a legislator tonight, so it's probably going to be a very lengthy speech, but I've got five note cards here to speak on tonight. And they're not all filled out in detail. Actually, a few of them just have a few words on them. So I promise not to keep you, as I'm sure many speakers that you've had before sometimes go on and on. But thank you for the invitation to be here tonight. Uh, Chris, thank you and, and Natalie uh, for, for arranging this for me to be here. I appreciate your communication with my office up there. Uh, to Dr. Lucky and his beautiful wife, Elise, thank you for letting me join you for dinner tonight, our conversations, and to the administration. I uh, won't we'll call everybody by name because I know I'll probably miss somebody, uh, but thank you for the job that each and every one of you do. Thank you for those that helped prepare this meal tonight, uh, for the work they did and put it in on. Um, and to all of you, the students out here, congratulations. Thank you for stepping up to a time when we will be looking upon you to be the leaders commonwealth and also for our country in each and everything that you do. Now, I've enjoyed it for the last few days following Twitter of uh, the different seminars and different topics that have been going on here at Lindsey Wilson with L3. And I wish I actually could have had time to come over and listen to some of those because you never can take away the time that you need to devote to learning more of how to become a leader. I'd like to talk a few things of my notes tonight of things throughout my life that I've learned and things that I still live by this day. As Chris mentioned, I'm currently a Kentucky State Senator. Uh, I never would have imagined that I was going to end up in politics, uh, but I've always took on leadership roles. Uh, out of college, and out of graduate school, I always had my sights set on working for the FBI. And when I was in middle school, I saw the movie Silence of the Lambs. I'm sure some of y'all probably remember that, but Joey Foster, some of that's maybe dating some of you all that may be a little bit younger that don't know about the movie. I would say, watch AMC or TNT, and I'm sure they'll probably come on as a radio show sometime. But I watched that movie and I thought, wow, I would love to do, love to be able to track serial killers, work for something like the FBI, fidelity, bravery, integrity. My parents were not in law enforcement. My mother was a college basketball coach. My father was a human resource manager for Fruit of the Loom. And I remember telling one of my really good friends that that's what I wanted to do when I got older. And he's like, yeah, Max, but you're from Campbellsville. You probably can't make it into the FBI. And I thought, I'm just saying that thought. Contacted the local FBI office when I was a high school freshman to find out what does it take to get into the FBI. And they gave me all the requirements, all the different things you have to go through. And I found out that getting into the FBI was about like making it into the National Football League. It was very, very tough. I always get my sights on that. In college, I majored, actually double majored in political science and history. It was in 95 when the Oklahoma City bombing happened, the first War Trade Center bombing happened. And it was at that time I really got passionate about terrorism. And then I was on graduate school, but I still stayed the focus of wanting to still work for the FBI. I knew applying out of college would be very difficult because the FBI is very selective in who they take and what kind of background you need to have. So I searched out. I found the best graduate program in the state of Kentucky, which is the Patterson School of Diplomacy. It focuses on careers in international affairs. Got through the Patterson School, sent my application off to the FBI, this was in 1999, and they sent a rejection letter saying, we're not hiring this time. The 1990s was kind of a freeze time for the Bureau, but the event happened on September 11, 2001, which opened up an opportunity for me. And as tragic as that event was, it was an opportunity. I got a call. From the FBI. I still had my file and said, Max, we'd like to bring you in for an interview. So after that point, we went the interview, went through the background check, went through the polygraph exam, which I would not encourage anyone to ever do. It's an hour and a half polygraph examination. And then it's through the stages of Quantico, that site that I've always wanted to do. And it was great to live out a childhood dream to be able to do. But the FBI didn't end up being the life that I chose to live. There were things along the way that made me think more of family than about job. Family commitment, having a wife in dental school and in residency, having four children and the third being diagnosed with stage four cancer at a young age. And it was times like that that made me realize what's 
really important. It's almost your faith, it's your family, but it really gets back to me in your life. And sometimes you're going to find yourself in very, very tough situations. Bad things are going to happen to you. Some bad things have probably already happened to many people in this room already before. But it's how you react to those situations of what defines you as a person. The day that our son Carter was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer at the grand opening of my wife's dental practice. She had worked her entire professional career. And the day when you're cutting the cake and got the balloons and everything to do the, the, the ribbon cutting, we found out that day our son had cancer. I was at the pediatrician with our son <coughs> and have to go from there up to the dental office. It was one of the toughest things I've ever had to do. But it's how you respond. That's what determines the life that you will lead. Because others will look and see how you react to situations like that, which will be some of the toughest ordeals that you may ever face in your life. Our son Carter's doing great now. He is a very happy, healthy 11 year old boy, as well as our other three children that we have. But I always look back as to how we responded to that event in our life. And as I mentioned, things are going to happen in your life. Another thing, you're not as good as they say you are, but you're also not as bad as they say you are. I learned that a lot this session in Frankfurt. <laughs> you know, when you're an elected official, the lobbyists are kind of like the piranhas. They're kind of like the vultures that hang around there. They've got their agendas of what lobbyists and what you use all over them. And many times they'll say, Senator Wise, you are a rock star. You are going places. Man, you are one of the hottest people right now in the legislature. You hear those things and you're like, do you really know who I am? Because my wife would probably say something else. But also, you're not as bad as they say you are. This session, as I mentioned, was one of the toughest sessions that we've ever dealt with in the Kentucky legislature. Sessions like that, though, helped me define who also I am as a person. Because if I went by everything that was said about me on Facebook or on social media, I would want to probably not be able to go out in public again by some of the things that were said. But you're not as good as you are, but you're not also as bad as sometimes they say you are. And this session was good for me. And many people probably think, how is it good for me? Because sometimes you need to take that negativity and humbleness and bring yourself back down to really what makes you the person in the legislature that you need to be. Do the right thing. Simple enough, we should always do the right thing. When this session ended, I was faced with the situation of a very moral and ethical dilemma. Our governor, which I'm of the same political party as, had made some comments that were posted on the news that went very, very viral by the comments that he said of saying that the teachers that were up there that were protesting probably caused that day a guarantee that there was sexual assaults. A child took drugs that day. A child was took poison that day. And as I got home, that was one of the last days we were leaving session. When I got home, I actually saw the video. I watched the comments. I told my wife, I said, I'm going to fork in the road here, Heather. I said, I know what I need to do, but is it what I should do? She said, what do you mean by that? And I said, I'm going to speak out. I don't agree with those comments. I don't think they're right. Maybe what the governor was trying to say, but how it came out, I'm not going to agree with. And simply because I'm of one particular political party doesn't mean I always have to agree with everything of one particular party. So I went on social media, put a tweet out condemning the words of the governor. I'm saying that I stand up for teachers, stand up for educators. But what's for educators, I would not be where I'm at today. A teacher got us every place we are in life at some point or another. So I fired off the tweet, not thinking sometimes on social media. Chris sends out a tweet compared to me. I'm not sure how many retweets Chris would get or likes would get. But sometimes when you're a state senator, maybe you get more than maybe Chris would get. 
But in this particular situation, I don't know, didn't think much about it. My daughter, who's a freshman in high school, her oldest child, came down the steps and she said, Dad, you've gone viral. <laughs> and I said, what? She said, and this once again is a 14-year-old. That's kind of how I guess you have to relate to me, like my boys at Fortnite is an 11-year-old. And I said, what, Grayson, have I done? And she said, you have over 1,300 likes on Twitter. You're also on CNN and also on Fox News right now with your comments you made against the governor. I said, oh, my gosh. I'm probably going to get a phone call. And she said, you know what, Dad? I'm so proud of you. You did the right thing. You're probably going to get criticized by the governor or by some of your own members of your party. And my 14-year-old daughter said, Dad, you did the right thing. And more people what you did in the long run of this. It was about the next day I started getting messages from a lot of members of my own party and also the other party saying thank you for what you did. That's leadership in my eyes. You sometimes making tough decisions like that. There could be consequences, but at the same time, there are decisions. And I will not be defined in my life by a title. I'll never carry this title with me for the rest of my life. But I'll always be the man I was before I ran for office. I hope to continue to do what's always leave on this as well. Don't be afraid to fail. It's another sign of leadership. Don't be afraid to fail. Put yourselves out there. I'm sure many of you all have already failed at something, but you will also fail at some point in life of trying to do something. But don't be afraid of failure. You'll learn more from failure than sometimes you do from actually success. And it could be with the volleyball team. You saw the success that you've had this season with that. Your sports teams it could be a failure of a season ago or two years ago. What defines you this year? If it's from academics, if it's from job placement, whatever it may be, don't be afraid to fail by putting yourself out there. No job is ever beneath you. When I work for the FBI, I work for the Navy who was the typical agent that if you asked to do any, asked him to do anything other than what it was in his job description, no, would not do it. Making copies, he would go to the secretary to have her make the copies for him. Doing the things, the little things that he thought was just beneath him. You're noticed more in life by doing the little things. People will look at that and see an example that you said by not being told to do something, just do it. Just do your job. Do your job the right way. If it ever is beneath you, don't be afraid to do those things. I really appreciate talking to you all tonight. Most of my talks like this are just talks. That's how I am as a professor in my classes at UK. Sometimes you learn just more about discussion and about topics like this than anything that ever may be before. I really appreciate the leadership of this campus and for the L3 program and what they're instilling in you, you young people, as you step out and you start this next chapter in your lives. You're going to carry on a tradition here at Lindsay Wilson that's going to be with you for the rest of your careers. And I wish each and every one of you, and I thank you parents and grandparents and coaches and teachers that have played a role in each of these young people that are here tonight. That's what leadership is all about. And I thank each and every one of you again for allowing me to speak to you this evening. Thank you so much. You got this. Thank you, Senator Wise. Um, I think in our lives we search for to surround ourselves with people of integrity and when we think about that and the words that you chose, talking about humility and making those choices, I can tell you that, uh, that we believe certainly that you're a person of integrity. And I appreciate your, your honesty and, and challenging the system, so to speak. But thank you so much for those kind of words and, and sharing and providing leadership to our community and to our county. And as you continue to go forward, we wish you the best. Thank you so much. And with that, we have a special award we'd like to recognize you with. Senator Wise, if you come up, you are now an honorary member of L3, so it was an honorary award for you. And I 
had to check his size just to make sure. You know, he stayed pretty fit, so we made sure we had the right size shirt. Thank you so much. Ms. Kayla Jones, a nursing junior from right here in Columbia, Kentucky.
Next up, Mr. Travis Faulkner, Counseling and Human Development Senior, finishing his master's degree from Lexington, Kentucky. Next, Ms. Mackenzie Montano, Communication Senior from Prospect, Kentucky. And, and last but not least, Ms. Anna Merle, Communication and Journalism Senior from Columbia, Kentucky.
first, I would really like to thank Ms. Amy for that really gracious introduction. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, and next, I would like to thank all the people who nominated me. I would like to thank Ms. Amy for really modeling the way of leadership and showing me the importance of compassion and kindness to all people. I would like to thank Ms. Natalie Vickis for always pushing me and always speaking my brain when I have an idea to maybe take it one notch further. I would like to thank, even though she's not with us this evening, Miss Hannah McCandless, um, for teaching me the power of forgiveness and the power of relationships and how to really cultivate those positive ones um, to make lasting change in your life. And lastly, um, all the way in Norway, I would like to give a big shout out to Miss Mariah Beasley for nominating me as well, um, for just showing me the importance of always having a good time and always finding the silver lining even when things are not ideal. Also, I'd like to thank the selection committee for choosing me. I'd like to thank all of my friends, um, those who are here with me tonight, and also those who are not, because without them, I definitely would not be the same person, because they've been a true catalyst for my um, own self-awareness and my self-development, not only as a student, but also as a leader while I'm here at Lindsay Wilson. There is a quote um, that, that an author said, her name is um, Miss Atrika Tyner, and she says, the heart of a leader is manifested through the service of others. And this is something that has really resounded with me um, as I have been a Bonner Scholar for the past three years. And for those of you who do not know, it's essentially a national nonprofit volunteer network um, where I complete service hours in order to um, gain scholarship as well as professional development and training enrichment, training and enrichment opportunities as well. Um, throughout my time, I've been able to work with marginalized populations such as the underserved, rural and impoverished um, while working at Tim Hortons, um, Camp Kentaughton, and working with those who are sexually and physically abused at the Lake Cumberland Children's Advocacy Center. And I've learned through working with these people, I've learned more about myself and my own passions. So kind of going back to what Senator Wise was saying earlier, not thinking that anything is below you. Because in those moments where you're working with things that are below you, you truly find yourself. You truly are learning from those people and the importance of giving and learning and self-development. Also, another key to my leadership style is the importance of being self-aware. I think all too often we find it so easy to be complacent in what we were taught and what we were grown up in, but the point of true leadership comes at the breaking out of that shell and understanding that, you know, when I'm, the information I'm taking in may make me uncomfortable because it's not what I'm used to, but that's what's valued and that's what's important and that's something that I really gleaned here while being a Blue Raider. And along with self-awareness, the importance of clarifying your values. This is something that I was definitely drilled into my head in my freshman intro to leadership studies class uh, with uh, Miss Amy and Chris Schmidt. Uh, the importance of knowing what you stand for, because if you're just a leader um, leading the blind, you're not really going to go to any identifiable point. And until you have the ability to say, I'm working towards this goal because of this, if you know your why, you will make it happen. And if you know your how, that will really drive you to make that lasting change that you're working for as a leader. And also, finally, knowing your limits, because when you know your limits, you can become limitless. So working towards, um, you know, I may not be very good at this, but knowing that, I know exactly what to work on. Therefore, I can be the best well-rounded leader that I can be. And in conclusion, I'm incredibly grateful for being chosen for this award and to the Lindsay Wilson leaders who have inspired me, and I hope to carry on the spirit of being a Blue Raider no matter where I go, and I hope to inspire younger students to stay humble, dream big, and remember their Lindsay Wilson roots. Thank you. Secretary for SAB. Junior year, she was vice president and basically ran the club. 
And then now, she is the president of Student Activities Board. And under her reign, we have done more events and activities this year than we ever have. Not only is she involved with Student Activities Board, she's also a senior intern for the Bonner Scholar um, Program, where she coordinates all the freshman class meetings and all Bonner meetings. She meets with the freshmen Bonners to connect them to campus resources and helps them transition into college and campus life. With Bonner, she has completed over 1,500 hours of service. That is remarkable to me. Samantha truly embodies what it means to be an L3 recipient, and even more importantly, she embodies what us, what all of us hope that our students can, be, can become. And I'm honored to present you with the L3.
One is that I, as a leader, am pretty flexible with what I'm doing. Um, I'm okay with taking a background role, but I'm also okay with stepping to the forefront when I need to, and when I see that that position is one that I need to fill, that I have what it takes to be in that position. I've learned that connecting with people is one of the most powerful forces of change ever to me. Finding what people need, uh, understanding what they're going through, and helping them through that situation so that they later on can empower and help somebody else change the world. I feel like it's going to be the big, have the biggest impact on this world. Another thing I learned is that you need to be truthful and honest about the mistakes and failures in your past. Those are the things you're going to learn from those. And when you're truthful with other people about those, that helps them learn a little bit more too without having to go through the messing up part. And then being intentional about growing and learning from everything you experience and do is key. If you read a book, if you meet a new person, anything you experience, you need to take something from it. And use what you learn to fuel your passions and grow as a person. Lord knows I have a lot more to learn about in this world, and I have a lot more that I hope I'll be able to offer because of that in the future. Now there's a lot more lessons I've learned than that, but I want to show you or tell you about one last thing I've learned. I've learned that caring is enough. I've learned that even though I used to think that I had to be something more to be a leader, to make an impact, I've learned that caring is actually the most important thing. I've learned that if you care, who you are and what you have to offer is more than enough. She is a model student at Lindsay Wilson. 
and college. She's an excellent nursing student who gives 110% in everything that she does. Her leadership qualities stand out above the rest. She embodies living, learning, and leading on a daily basis. She's hardworking, she's studious, dedicated to succeeding, and very humble and mature in her personality. Caleb will be an excellent nurse that will continue to touch the lives of many patients and families. I have no doubt that she will continue her education upon graduation in May of 2019 and will constitute an exemplary advanced practice nurse. She will be a wonderful asset to the nursing community and a great alumnus for us. It is my great pleasure to award junior nursing student Kayla Jones the Lindsay Wilson College L3 Award. Good days, cried with us on bad days, and cheered with us when we would get good results. 
We feel that because Addison loved the hospital so much and was so proud of her floor, which was the cancer center, we want to give back all this, all we can to this wonderful place. So when someone asked me why I chose to work with kids with cancer of all the things I, that I could choose to be passionate about, I think when you hear Addison's story, it's kind of self-explanatory because these kids, they, they, like I said, they continue to light the fire in me because they don't want to be sick. You know, they want to be just a normal kid, and they continue to live that life despite all the circumstances. So as I said, I want to thank Dr. Button and Ms. Hancock for nominating me for this award. Um, it's been a true honor, and I also want to thank Chris Smith. He's been with me since the beginning, and also Senator Max Wise. I also want to thank my parents and my husband for being here, and they've always, you know, traveled with me wherever I go um, to help support me. So as I continue to care for some of the nation's most fragile patients, I cannot wait to say with pride that I graduated from Lindsay Wilson College. Thank you. Thank you all so much. 